Imagine waking up one day to find that you have been kidnapped and are trapped inside a house. You are told that the only way you and your friends can escape is by taking it in turns and torturing each other. The kidnapper has inserted a device inside your neck which collates a chemical when your body is suffering the most, you only have 22 hours to escape before you all die. What would you do? That's exactly what happens in the 2011 movie called Vile. But before we begin, beware of spoilers, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a man tied down on an operating table. As he regains his consciousness, he is seen scanning the room with a confused look not knowing how he got there. A surgeon is then seen cutting into his chest and his blood is collected in a beaker. We learn that the man hasn't been given any anesthesia and he squirms in agony. After the surgery, the surgeon collates and packages up some white pills and puts them in a briefcase. In the next scene, we are introduced to a couple called Kai and Tony who are on a camping trip with their friends Taylor and Nick. Taylor approaches Nick and wakes him up. Taylor wants to tell Nick that she's pregnant but she is unable to bring herself to tell him. Not before long they are interrupted by Tony. He tells them that they need to leave the campsite that evening and head back to the city. On their way home, they stop at a gas station. Taylor uses the washroom when a random stranger Diane, approaches Nick while he is filling up the tank. Diane tells him that she ran out of fuel about a mile back and asks for a ride to her truck. Since it is on their way, Nick agrees to give her a lift. When Taylor returns from the washroom, she is immediately suspicious of Diane and tells Nick that he shouldn't have agreed to that cougar stranger. Soon after, they all jump into the car and head off. While driving, a song called Lethal Injection is played on the radio and Diane tells Nick to turn it up as she loves this song. They soon arrive to Diane's truck and she gets out, she tells them to wait as she wants to give them a gift for helping her which they find a little strange. Suddenly, Diane arrives with a gas mask on and to their horror, she sprays gas into the car knocking everyone out. In the next scene the four of them wake up to find themselves trapped inside a house with people watching over them. Suddenly, a member from the group approaches Kai and rips off her nail. Nick and Tony are enraged and end up in a fight with the other guys. Eventually they all calm down and learn they have all been kidnapped. Tony then questions the guy who tore off his girlfriend's fingernail and demands an explanation. He tells Tony to follow him to the room upstairs and shows him a video. When they play the video, a woman appears who seems to be some kind of medical physician. She explains that they all have a gadget inserted into the back of their neck. She says that they are looking for a chemical that the body naturally produces and each of them are going to make that happen. Unfortunately, the chemical they need for their experiment can only be produced when the body signal to the brain that it is in trouble. The lady concludes that the only way out of the house is to inflict pain on each other using weapons they have supplied. When the body suffers, the natural chemical will fill up a jar and once filled, the gadgets will be removed. However, if they fail, a poison will be injected into their brain immediately eliminating them. They only have 22 hours to escape. After watching the video, the group introduce themselves as Sam, Greg, Julian, and Tara. Tony suggests breaking out of the house but Sam explains they have tried everything while they were asleep but there is no way out. At first the group thought it was some sort of a prank but now it is clear the lady in the video is real and they are being used for an experiment. Just then Julian breaks down and shouts into the CCTV before removing the gadget from the back of his neck. He instantly collapses onto the floor and takes his last breath. The others realize they have no choice but to do what they have been asked. Greg steps forward and asks the group to help him get out first as he wants to see his son again. The group begin beating Greg but quickly realize that his brain doesn't produce the right chemical they require. They decide to strap Greg onto a table and then torture him. They use the tools provided and they break off his fingernails and cut into him with a knife. The pain bar reading on the screen increases implying their plan is working. One girl, Tara, is especially violent and breaks his leg causing him to pass out. The group then decide they cannot risk injuring each other to this extent. They agree to torture each person up to no higher than 6% on the bar in a particular order. In the next scene the captives are seen injuring themselves. Using their blood as ink to write a number on bits of broken glass, they place the glass into a bowl and pick out a number which signifies the order they will be tortured in. Next up is Sam, 
he removes his shirt so he can feel as much pain as possible. He is burnt on the stomach with an iron and his fingernails are ripped out. Nick thanks Sam for stepping up and taking the pain, but now he realizes it is his turn. His girlfriend Taylor breaks down in tears as she cannot bear to see Nick suffer. She then recalls having oxy pills in her pocket and quickly runs over to Nick and gives them to him in attempt to make things easier on him. However, sadly for Nick the bar slows down instead, Taylor had no idea this would happen. Meanwhile, Greg has finally regained consciousness, but he is in a terrible state with all his injuries. The group contemplate leaving Greg behind if they manage to escape, they can't afford to be slowed down by him. Everyone agrees except Tony who is very angry with their decision. While Nick is resting, Taylor agrees with the majority on his behalf to leave Greg behind. Next on the list is Lisa, she is terrified and tries to avoid being tortured by hiding in the room. She is dragged out by Sam and Tara and they begin torturing her. Meanwhile, Nick eventually regains his senses. Taylor apologizes for giving the pills and didn't realize they would slow the pain bar down. Taylor then tells Nick unexpectedly that she is pregnant but Tara overhears her conversation. She immediately informs the group that Taylor has been hiding oxy pills and that she is pregnant. She insists that she will still need to go through with the torture. Nick quickly intervenes and volunteers to go in her place instead. Meanwhile, Greg who is suffering demands some pills to help ease the pain. Sam and Tara are against the idea as it could jeopardize their chances of getting out. Nick and Tony don't listen and grab the remaining pills and quickly try to give them to Greg. When Tara tries to stop Nick, she gets punched in the face by Tony who has had enough of her psychotic behavior. In the next scene, Tony, Taylor, and Tara try to increase the bar reading by 6% each by sticking their hands in boiling water. Tara is not able to cope with the pain and backs out the second time. Tony and Taylor stick their hands back into the boiling water for the second time. Suddenly, Tara grabs a kitchen knife and stabs Tony for punching her in the face. The large pot of boiling water falls all over him and Tara attempts to stab him again. Nick approaches her from behind and hits her over the head knocking her out. When Tara wakes up, she finds herself strapped down onto the table as the group get ready to torture her. She immediately asks what percentage the bar is at. Tony tells her that her actions raised the bar to 48% but reveal they will be pushing higher than the usual 6% level this time. Tara starts to protest against this and cries out begging to be released. But the group don't listen as they have already made their mind up and need to increase the level. In desperation Tara tries to escape from the table and while trying to fight back, she grabs a knife and cuts Kai in the neck, fatally wounding her. Tony and the team are distraught. They cry out comforting Kai as she takes her last breath. Tony decides that Tara needs to go but Nick convinces him to keep her alive. Tony reluctantly agrees on the condition that he gets to do what he wants to her and the rest of the group agree. We then see Tony severely damaging Tara's larynx with a wrench, he then removes some of her skin with a grater and cuts her arm open with a knife. When Tara finally passes out, the bar jumps from a mere 48% to 85%. The group only have less than an hour left to escape. In the next scene, the team discuss what to do next in the very little time they have left. Taylor tells them that they must inflict pain on themselves at the same time if they want any chance of escaping before the time runs out. Tony disagrees and thinks the quickest way is to simultaneously break their collarbones. Tony then breaks everyone's collarbone but is unable to do the same to Taylor who is pregnant. Instead, we see Nick break Tony's collarbone and immediately the meter reading hits 100%. The projector flashes and a woman appears on the screen congratulating them all for completing the task and mentions that they are only one step away from freedom. She then instructs the group to go to the living room where they will find the retractor to remove the gadget on the back of their neck. The group follow the instructions and take it in turn successfully removing the device apart from Tony and Nick, who haven't managed to take theirs off yet. Tony decides he wants to take Kia's body with him, just before heading out, he hears a strange noise nearby, he calls out for Nick and walks towards the sound. Taylor tells Nick to go and check on Tony while she helps Greg who is unable to walk. When Nick leaves the room, he is shocked to find Tony holding Sam back. Tony shouts out that Sam has been involved in this experiment the whole time and he is an inside man who works for the meds company. But before Nick can help, 
Sam manages to fight off Tony off and stabs him in the stomach before running off. Next, Greg and Taylor are seen in a room unable to escape. Greg reveals to Taylor that he was selling the pills the company produced, but he swears he didn't know the pills were made from inflicting pain on humans. Greg has lost a lot of blood and takes a turn for the worst, his health deteriorates fast and he is seen taking his last breath. Suddenly, the doors begin to close and the bar starts to drop, Taylor freaks out as it looks like the process is going to start again. We are then taken to Nick who is caught up with Sam and yells at him for betraying them all. Meanwhile, Taylor is going insane and starts to inflict pain on herself to raise the bar. She burns herself and hammers a nail into her wound. She successfully manages to bring the bar up to 100% again. Nick pleads with Sam to let them all go. He offers himself to free Taylor but he refuses. Suddenly, Sam presses a button on the computer behind him which controls all the locks on the doors and sends signals to the brain. Nick and Tony who still have the device on their neck are then seen in excruciating pain as poison is slowly released into their system. Nick collapses on the floor and Sam walks over to him and admits that he suffered a lot of injuries in his life and yet survived. Sam is clearly twisted and believes everyone deserves pain to be innocent. From nowhere, Nick pulls out a screwdriver from his pocket and stabs Sam. Nick then quickly takes the pills left in the room that counteracts the poison and removes the device from his neck. When Nick sees Taylor and Tony on the monitor, he rushes out to save them. He attempts to open the door to try and save Taylor but is unsuccessful. He then approaches Tony's body but it is too late. Nick is absolutely devastated, he uses bolt cutters to free himself from the building and finally escapes the torture house. In the last scene, Nick is seen sitting at a restaurant having coffee and through the window he sees Diane outside. He decides to follow her. Eventually he follows her to the exact same place her truck was broken down when he tried to help her. Nick creeps up behind her and slams her head against the car knocking her out. He then stuffs Diane's body in the back of the truck and turns up the volume on the radio playing Lethal Injection and the movie ends there. You guys are awesome if you have made it this far in the video. If you want to see more of such movie recaps, hit the subscribe button to become part of our movie family.